Hello my friends, I'm Rick and this is your seat at the table and we are looking at 2nd edition's Player Handbook Rules Supplement, The Complete Thieves Handbook. And like I said, 2nd edition really took off and it was one of their longer uh, variants and so there were so many additional books and there's an entire series of this sort of, in this particular style that cover a range of both cl uh, classes, races, and uh, some extra stuff. And uh, they really, I guess this is one of those things where you, you, do you need it or don't? I mean, uh, I bought them all because I'm a crazy. And, I'm a, and as the general, ma or as the uh, uh, game master or uh, for my game campaigns and stuff, I kind of felt like I needed to have as much reference material as possible. I wanted to try, at the time, I was trying hard to stick up or keep up with the Joneses and to keep up with uh, the trend and the, the rule sets and all this other things. And so for players, I would say, what's your favorite class? Who do you play the most? I mean, then maybe that would be worth you buying a copy uh, specifically pertaining to your, your choice of class and race because of the advantages in it. And I was trying to figure out uh, exactly what year this thing came out because I want to say it was uh, 90, 91, something like that, but I'm not sure 100%. And they've, the, the books have aged well the bindings and stuff they're they're some they're not as good as the the regular books that they produce but at the same time they they've handled use and and a and time well and so i have no complaints with them and i don't see the there's usually a page that has all the the publication information on it and for the love of pete i'm just not seeing it or i'm just it's stuck together all right here we go way at the bed 1989 okay so obviously a major change took place in the late 90s so when we get into the third edition it's when we see them change uh, the thieves become rogues and the argument was we wanted to downplay the criminal element or the uh the evil element that kind of goes hand in hand with being a thief depending on how you view them uh, and taking into account that they their roles as a, in adventuring groups were much broader or much more uh, uh, versus scout versus <clears throat> you know pickpocket kind of thing uh, so there's some general sets of skills that you know most ad rogues or thieves will want to have especially if they're an adventuring group you know picking locks uh, uh, finding traps uh, creating traps that kind of stuff so they they wanted to expand they're one of the of the of the race or of the classes they're one of the most popular i don't know if the wizards are more popular than rogues but i've always felt that you know more fighter class will be created because they're the easiest to run and easiest to play as a role uh and but Rogues, on the other hand, are something that attracts people to that that idea of pre presenting themselves in that position or that role. And so the, they came out with uh, an expanded set of rules and additional material. It's not, not totally surprising. And it was from this that they built upon, well, geez, they, this turned out to be so popular. Let's do the next one and the next one and so on. And it just kept growing into the stack of shell, uh, books about that long on my shelf. Uh, anyway, social backgrounds, motivations, and not everybody, you know, in this case, you know, some people want fame or infamy, others for greed, some for loyalty, uh, you know, some for survival, and some just pure whim. And their motivations, it's just like the motivations they give for what your, your, your birth class was. So in your social background, if you're a poor unknown versus being a, wealth, a wealthy noble and entering the thieves uh, profession as a well as a noble who's got lo loads of money or a relative of a noble with loads of money as opposed to being somebody who's trying to feed their family or just feed themselves uh, the motivations are grossly different and the expectations change too so being a noble who's gets caught pickpocketing people on the street or begging not going to go well for them it's not going to play well uh, it is part of the stuff you want to may or may not have to deal with so some sample archetypes is the artist the folk hero the desperado the professional the mobster the kleptomaniac the street ur urchin or victim of circumstance the trickster 
and the vigilante and it goes in and gives you a better description of them and also talks about the differences when it comes to thieves and the races so in the uh, uh, the dwarves thieving is a good way to get your hands cut off or, or banished from the uh, from the community uh, so more likely they, they you're not going to be a pickpocketing begging dwarf you're going to be a troubleshooter you're going to be a a lock breaker you're going to be uh, somebody who specializes in gaining entry <laughs> to a place i mean you're you're going to not be a thief and it's like the elves the elves tend to not have a lot of things personal wise that would warrant other people wanting to steal them and or uh, also are so high-minded in a lot of their ways of viewing the idea that what's mine is yours and yours is mine if you need it I'm going to take or help you kind of thing there's a huge difference they also uh, are characterized as something else so uh, it says in this uh, elven thieves are sometimes characterized as eavesdroppers or spies <laughs> more you're spying on me as opposed to that's why you have my uh, wallet in your pocket because you're spying on my crap and then we go on about the gnomes the prankster and the thrill seeker as it says half elves halflings other non-human races, demi-human cities, and guilds, etc., etc. So, we get into some new proficiencies that are specific or useful for the thief class, thief class, rogue class. Everyone look at it. So, alertness, animal noise, begging, boating, endurance, fast talking. I've had a number of character types over the years that would take this as a proficiency if they could get it and uh, I was one of the few proficiencies or, and and things that I saw in second edition that I, I, I kind of just carried over to third edition because I didn't find them in third edition and and they were such a, a great useful thing you know, somebody can out talk to, uh, the neighbor or able to talk themselves out of a situation and here's the rules for how to you know do that the modifiers and I was just it was excellent excellent uh, play vehicle for a couple players of mine too. Uh, looting, intimidation, locksmithing, herbalism, information gathering, reading and writing, tracking, trailing, etc, etc. Voice mimicry. And then we got demi-humans and non-weapon uh, and non-weapon proficiency. So it gives all the various races that's at the time that was ex normal for the gameplay. Uh, you know, what they're doing and what they can benefit from or what they should apply. Uh, they also have a caveat saying in there, just because they're there doesn't mean your, your dwarf if, can't have proficiencies from a different category or not choose not to take that category because they because that's just what the character wants to do. You, you kind of go with what the character's wishes and desires are as often as possible, most, most of the time anyway. Kits and thief types, so thieving skills, the adventurer, the acrobat, you know, you, you get the idea. Bandit, assassin, it just goes on and on. And then we get into things like dealing with uh, uh, how life should be for a would-be thief. You know, we're not just talking uh, their pro specific profession, but everything goes related to it in other ways and find that chapter. So, creation chart. And thieves guild. So we talk about how, uh, what is the guild? developing the, the the thieves guild itself benefits of membership equipment training fencing information specialist help uh, responsibilities of a guild membership i've had a couple uh year uh, over the years i've run a couple of games where it was revolving around because i had a couple uh, i had one group for sure that had it I think three of them wanted to be rogues, and and so I think three wanted to be rogues and one wanted to be a wizard, and because he always wants to be a wizard, and so uh, we just set it up in, from a guild perspective. So that's how they knew each other. That's how they got together to do their jobs. And sometimes if they they went someplace and decided that we're going to need some more muscle or we're going to need some more specialities, they would go back to the guild and negotiate with finding that NPC help that they might require. And there's a lot of play and options for this kind of environment and uh, so the, the guilds also would this is a good blueprint for creating guilds for other uh, classes as well because there are classes there's, there's fighter guilds and there's wizards uh, you know uh, conclaves and there's uh, uh, you know uh, bard, bard uh, whatever the hell they call them they're good togethers and, and 
it just makes sense to me that there's these kind of resources in the background uh, for the characters if you want to take that uh, take that road and this is a great blueprint for trying to create some of that so uh, you know these skills in the campaign world, size and wealth of community, social alignments based on, you know, basically on your alignments, special social factors, these skills and other groups, thieves in the law, thieves and merchants, thieves and other guilds, guild masters and grand structures, guild leaders, guild rulership, designing a thieves guild introduction, using what isn't covered, tables, blah blah blah. So it just tells you how to go through all the stuff you need to know how to come up with that. And then they give you a sample, a sample guild too, that you can work for either you tap directly or indirectly with all the NPCs and potential specialists that, that are going in with that guild. Then we get into the tools of the trade. So we get a little bit more expanded uh, equipment list for specifically for the rogue with the class and things that you would not really expect to find on the general sell market or uh, sell list for uh, the player's handbook. And then we get some uh, helpful tips and some basic rules on how to use some of this stuff. I mean things like cat stink. Who doesn't need to have the uh, cat stink? Even the best trained dog, watchdog, or tracking dog finds it impossible avoiding being distracted when there are cats about. Uh, you know, I'm just saying. All right, tar paper, shark skin, evasions. Yeah, thieves often have a reason to evade detection or pursuit. Some of their skills, hiding in shadows, moving silently, or tailored toward the sand. Equipment detail, oh, just to get your equipment set up so it's, uh, it's not going to chink and clink and rattle and move. Yeah, it makes sense now. I understand. Yeah, right. So there you go. The complete thieves handbook. You can get these books. These are these are great books. And I have used these in Middle Earth role playing game. I've used them in uh, uh, occasionally on on some Shadow Run campaigns that I did. Uh, numerous Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, I don't have any other uh, other than Merp. I don't have any other truly. Uh, uh, Fant uh, fantasy settings. So for game systems, I've got uh, sci-fi and uh, sci-fi and, and cyberpunk kind of stuff for the majority. Other than uh, so, my go-to for that kind of game would be D and D. I will play other people's game systems uh, all day long, absolutely. But uh, uh, it is what it is. So these books have been very useful over the years, and uh, I've I've made uh, uh, a lot of. I want to say. Uh, extras just getting ideas out of them but to me they were worth buying and I still pull them off the shelves on a, a few times a year depending on what it is I'm doing I know I had uh, two or three of these on my table uh, when we was running my campaign uh, last year for D&D &D Beyond uh, because it was just uh, uh, it was the type of characters and stuff that they were uh, they were portraying and the environment it just was helpful helpful reference material in my opinion well anyway the you know it is saturday the sun's shining it's on almost going to hit 60 today uh, we dismantled the cat boxes outside to get the blankets and stuff out so the wife can give them all a good wash bring the heating pads in from the hot and the heating bolt uh, I, I don't see having a serious freeze <laughs> until fall again i think we got past that that point you know, the cat, the outside cats are outside right now. She opened the garage and let them out. I've got uh, Mama sitting behind me, you know, uh, sleeping. She's uh, been in and out of heat this past uh, two weeks, which has been uh, a problem and mostly a, a bit of an annoyance. Not that that matters or anything like that. And then, uh, so we got her for the ARL for the 12th. <clears throat> it's going to be an ugly week for me all night, tomorrow night, all night, Monday night. And then I got to transition back over to day, show, day, day and afternoon stuff. Plus, I got to be up bright and early to get to get her out to the ARL before I go to work, so they can do their business. Right? She'll be much better off with all of her shots and when she's spayed. I mean, she's the last of the strays outside that that unless anything y'all unless some new ones show up, uh, they're the last one. She'll be the last one to go in and get all that done with. 
thank God for the SNP program at the ARL because they paid for all of it. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Anyway, you know the score. Going on, my friends. This is Rick. And hey, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button. Tell your buddies. Tell your friends. Tell your coworkers. Tell anybody else that's in the gaming industry or gaming uh, fandom that says, hey, this is a channel worth checking out. Right? Till next time.